In this problem, we are given a square surface with a side length of 3.2 millimeters, an electric field, a uniform electric field vector with a magnitude of 1800 newtons per coulomb passing through it, and an angle between this uh, perpendicular, this, this normal area vector coming out of the square, an angle of theta between the normal vector and the surface of 35 degrees. The problem tasks us with finding the electric flux, or the amount of electric field, through the surface. Now the first thing to note is that the electric flux is defined as the dot product of the electric field vector and the area vector, or in other words, uh, the normal vector coming out of a surface, but in magnitude it's just equal to the area of the surface itself. Now, because we are given the side length of the square, we can use this to find the magnitude of the area pretty easily. And we are just straight up given the magnitude of the electric field vector. So we can write this in its somewhat more simpler and easier to evaluate form uh, of the electric field, or the magnitude of the electric field, times the area, times cosine of the angle between them. So this will be the formula that we'll want to use to find the answer to the problem. Now so far, right now, it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to evaluate. Because like I said already, we have the magnitude of the electric field. We can find the magnitude of the area pretty easily. So all we need left is the angle that we're putting into the cosine function here. However, we're presented with a small problem because although it looks like we've got an angle that we can use, we actually want to think about this for a bit because simply plugging this angle into the cosine function is actually not going to be what we want because this system is a little bit more complicated than that. Remember, in the function for the dot product, the angle of the cosine refers to the angle between the directions that the e and a vectors are pointing. But let's take a closer look at this diagram here. If I have a horizontal line here representing the surface itself, and I have the area vector coming out of it, like such, then based on this diagram, the electric field vector will be pointing sort of downwards, like this. Now the angle theta shown to us in this diagram, the angle that is given to us as 35 degrees, is this angle right here. However, the angle we're looking for, the angle that we'll actually want to put into the formula, is this angle right here, the angle between the directions that these two vectors, E and A, are actually pointing. This is the actual angle that we'll want to find and put into the formula. Fortunately, this angle is a pretty easy one to find. We just need to use some pretty basic geometry here. Because the E vector is a straight line adjacent to both the mystery angle and the 35 degree angle here, that means that the sum of both angles should be equal to 180 degrees, since they'll add up to a straight line. So to find this angle, we'll just need to take 180 degrees and subtract 35 degrees. And this gets us 140 degrees, or 145 degrees. And this is the angle that we'll actually want to use in our formula. Therefore, the electric flux is equal to 1800 newtons per coulomb, the magnitude of the electric field, times the area of the surface, which is supposed to represent the area vector. Now to find the area of the surface, we are given the side length of the square. And remember, the area of a square is equal to the square of its side length. However, uh, I'll convert to SI units. We're given this in millimeters, but I want to write it in meters instead. So I'll write it as 3.2. And normally, instead of 3.2 millimeters, I'll write it as 3.2 times 10 to the third, or the 10 to the negative third, and that'll convert it to meters. And we're looking for area, so it'll just be the whole thing squared. And then times the cosine of 145 degrees. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, then you get an electric flux of negative 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 newton meters squared per coulomb. 
and this should be the final answer here. Notice that our result is negative. This checks out because of the way the dot product works, where our two vectors here, E and A, are greater than 90 degrees apart, so they're pointing in roughly opposite directions, so it makes sense that they will be negative. This also lines up with the fact that the problem explicitly tells us that we should be viewing this system as if the electric field was pointing inward into the, the, the surface area, as if it was entering some kind of shape, like a box. Which again makes sense because due to the way the dot product works, any inward piercing electric field should always be a negative electric flux.